Good morning. How are we all? Trust you're all keeping well and keeping safe. This morning, I want to give us some keys that will help us to be successful, to have a strategy in our life. You know, as children of God, God has already decided that we should live a life of success as we follow him in our lives. I want to say it's a done deal. Success is something we all enjoy in life. Whether it's uh, when the team we watch wins and praise God, Barnsley won last, last night. Whether it's when we take our exams and we get those incredibly positive results. We all like to succeed in life. And individually in our lives, I think it would be safe to say that we want to be successful. We want to have success. And it's the same for us as a church. We want to be successful. We want to see the name of Jesus glorified. We want to see the name of Jesus lifted up. We want to see people coming into a longing, lasting relationship with him. We want to see the church grow. We want to see the church develop as we seek to share the gospel uh, of Jesus. And we only get one shot at life. We only get one shot at church. And it's very important that we have a strategy to be successful. It's important that we have a strategy that will help us as we seek to serve and follow Jesus in our life. So what is a strategy? Well, according to the dictionary, it's a long-term plan or the act of conducting a campaign or manoeuvring an army. And throughout the Bible, there are many key figures we could look at, but this morning we're going to look at Nehemiah. I chose Nehemiah because we can learn some vital keys vital keys that will help us to have a strategy for success in our lives. You know, Nehemiah was a successful guy. He was a key figure in the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem. No mean feat, but under the covering and guidance of God, he succeeded where many thought he would fail. And I suggest today that he did so because he had a strategy. He had a plan. If we were to look into the success stories of many businesses, I guarantee that they'd, uh, there'd be one common denom denominator with them all. They'll have had a strategy. They'll have had a plan. If you look at individuals, the same would be there. If you looked into their lives, you'll see that they would have had a plan or a strategy for them to succeed where they were looking to succeed in their life. In the big world out there, I'm not saying that we keep to their plans, but some, because some of those plans and strategies might not be biblically based. But the point is this, with a plan or a strategy, we're more likely to succeed in life. And we know from the Bible in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, for God says this, for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So this morning, I want to come from a godly perspective, a godly plan, a godly strategy. Is that okay? Okay then, I'll give us some scriptures from the book of Nehemiah and give us four things that we can do to adopt a similar strategy in our lives. Firstly, we read in Nehemiah 1 verse 4, it says, When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Notice, before one brick was laid, before anything was put in place, he prayed. So the first thing we do, we look up, we pray. Before anything he prayed. Before anything, the first thing we need to do is to look up and pray to the God of heaven in Jesus' name. Whatever it is, whatever we embark on, whatever it is, whatever thing we're looking to do, we need to look up and bring it before God. Let me say, it's a good starting point for our strategy. It's a good starting point for your plan in life to look up. In life, many failings can be 
can be uh, traced back to the beginning. That's where the failing started. Because how we start is very important. And I suggest, as Christians, as followers of Jesus in our life, the starting point for us has to be that we look up to the God of heaven. You know, Nehemiah started well. He started by looking up. And it's the same for us. Jesus has to be our starting point. If we start with him, let me say, we'll end strong. If that's where we truly start, it has to be our first part of call. Hear me now. Success. Success needs to have a successful beginning. And there's no better place to start than at the throne of grace, at the feet of Jesus. So let's learn from Nehemiah that the first thing we do is look up, praise God. Secondly, we read in Nehemiah 2, verse 20, I answered them by saying, the God of heaven will give us success. We, his servants, will start rebuilding. You have no share in Jerusalem. The second key I want to suggest to us is after we've looked up, after we've prayed to the God of heaven, we need to speak up. Clearly, this is what Nehemiah did. He spoke up. He spoke into the face of his enemy. He spoke into the face of his problem. And he spoke up to declare his intentions. So once we've looked up to Jesus, then we need to speak up. Speak up and make our intentions clear. We can speak things into being. God's strategy for success in creation was to speak it into being. God said, and it was so. Jesus said in Matthew 21, verse 21, I tell you the truth. If you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what is done to the fig tree, but you can say to this mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea, and it will be done. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask in, your, in, in prayer. There we see the strategy. Look up, pray, and speak it. Speak and you will receive whatever you ask for. In our lives, we need to be bold in our prayers. We need to make bold confessions. Why? Because Jesus instructed us to. Nehemiah certainly did. We're going to you know, we're going to have success. We're going to start building a new lot. You, you, you have no part in it. Be bold. Make confession. Make confession the launching pad of your success. Don't forget, God has already decided it's a done deal. Jesus encourages us to speak into our problems. He encourages us to speak to our situations the difficulties we face, the challenges we have, the things that we need to make decisions on. In 2023, we can't let anything stand in our way of our goal, and that is to see people come to a longing, lasting relationship with Jesus. Once, we've, once we're grounded in prayer, we're ready to take off with our confession. Next, we read in Nehemiah 4, Verse 16 and 18. From that day on, half of my men did the work while the other half were equipped with spears, with shields, bows and armour. The officers posted themselves behind all the people of Judah who were building the wall. Those who carried materials did their work with one hand and held a weapon in the other and each of the builders wore his sword at his side as he worked. Third element of our strategy. Firstly, we, we, uh, we, we look up. And then secondly, we link up. And so, so thirdly, we link up. If we're to be successful, we need to learn how to work together. Nehemiah here had everybody working together. What a great strategy. What a great strategy. He had everybody working together. Everybody working together, in looking to succeed in what God had called them to do. You know, God has already decided that we need to, to link up together 
to be successful in all we do. So firstly, we, we, we pray, we speak up, and then we link up. Together, we know that we achieve more. The book of Romans, chapter 12, in Corinthians, chapter 12, clearly indicates to us that the strength of the church is its ability to work and function together because God has already decided. We can be the hardest workers on earth, but if we aren't able to work with each other, if we aren't able to work together, we'll struggle. We'll struggle to be successful. Leadership isn't about doing everything. Nehemiah understood that. And success isn't based on how hard we work. Success is based on teamwork, where everybody's working hard to achieve the goal. The ability to link together to achieve great things for God. Many hands make light work. Nehemiah showed us a great aspect of a good strategy, link up, teamwork. Jesus, he also showed us, didn't he? He didn't work alone, he called 12, showing us that the ability to link up is very important. So let me say, don't be a loner. Loners often end up lonely. Be a team player, link up with others. Let it be your strategy to link up. So look up, speak up, link up. And finally, this morning, Nehemiah 8 verse 10. Nehemiah said, go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks and send some of those who have nothing prepared. This day is sacred to the Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Last key, cheer up. God, God's joy is truly, truly our strength. God loves her. Cheerful giver, let me say God loves her. Cheerful worker, getting on and doing what he's called us to do. God loves a cheerful worker who sets his or her strategy out to fulfill all that God has purposed for them. You know, we can all find excuses not to. But let me say, we have no, no excuse not to. God, through his word, has set before us a strategy that works, a strategy that will bring success to our lives. Nehemiah here followed this strategy, and he succeeded. He succeeded where many thought he'd fail. And when you read the book of Nehemiah, many tried, many tried, and many failed. But when we have a strategy in place, we will more, time, more times than not, we will succeed in our work for our Lord and Saviour. Look up, speak up, link up, and cheer up. There we have a strategy for success. So as I close today, as I come to a close, let me ask, in your life, have you looked up? Looked up and prayed to the God of heaven for your individual situation. Have you spoke up? Have you spoke up? Have you made yourself known to your creator? Have you put it out there? what God is speaking to you about? Have you linked up with the family of God? Have you linked yourself into his kingdom? Please, don't let this day pass by. Don't let this op the opportunity to cheer up pass you by. Because the greatest decision, the greatest choice that you or I could ever make is to become a Christian, a follower of Jesus. But to do that, if you haven't already done it, you'll need to look up, you'll need to speak up, you'll need to link up, which will lead to you cheering up. Praise God. Let's just pray together. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you today 
and your word to us. And I pray today for every person gathered. Maybe they haven't looked up to you, they haven't spoken up and linked up to you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And I pray, Lord, that as they do, they will find the joy of the Lord in their lives through a relationship with you, through your Son, Jesus Christ. And for any others today, Father, of things that they need, I pray, Father, that they would look up and pray to you, speak up, and that they would link up about that very situation. I ask it, Lord, in Jesus' name, to his glory. Father, we love you and thank you for all you've done for us, for all you're doing for us, and for all you're going to do for us. God, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Have a great day.